H.J.P. Arnold is an astronomer and very keen photographer, an expert on space and astrophotography. He was assistant to the managing director of Kodak Limited during the period of Apollo. He's also the author of many books on space photography and exploration. This is um, a roll of, as you can see, 70 millimeter film. And this is, um, of course, I hasten to say it's not the original, which is in the um, closely guarded and temperature and pressure controlled vaults in Houston, uh, Magazine 40 from Apollo 11. So this is the roll of vector chrome film that was exposed mainly by Neil Armstrong on the lunar surface. And of course, it's a historical record. But I do stress that this is a duplicate um, which was given to me and I'm very proud to have been given it by the people at the photographic technology division in Houston. What indeed could this solar radiation do to the images? We know for example how x-rays can affect film on earth and we know how the photographs of the damaged Chernobyl nuclear power station were badly fogged from radiation. You have an enormous amount of radiation in space and potentially it affects film, of course, and of course, as you, as you will well know, it is, its prime effect is on contrast. We took a latent image recorded on the film of a color test chart and exposed it to eight MeV X-rays. The lowest radiation dose we applied to the film was 25 rem. The latent image, if it hadn't been subjected to radiation, would look like this. A good quality, high contrast, color transparency. After exposure to the 25 rem radiation, the image is almost entirely obliterated. This means, uh, in my estimation, a dose as little as 5 rem would seriously undermine the transparency. It would look significantly fogged. It would be a very thin image. If you look at the results, top quality duplicates, you can see that there's there appears to be no effect whatsoever. It never got to the stage where I heard, at least, that a, a film had been badly affected by temperature or the pressure differentiation or radiation. I would expect to see on the transparencies evidence of small bright dots where a high-velocity nuclear particle had impinged on that film. I have no evidence whatsoever that this has occurred. The good place to look for it is on the regions of the film which haven't been exposed in the camera, the black spaces, as it were, between the frames. We're protected on Earth by a nice thick atmosphere, and that combined with the magnetic field keep these ionizing particles away from us, on film, of course. In space, you're not offered that protection. To prevent an ionizing particle, well, very energetic particles that you get in space, from damaging the film, you would need a significant thickness of lead protecting that film. So if the film exhibited no signs of radiation damage, then surely the camera itself must have been protected. Was the Hasselblad lunar surface camera shielded from radiation? Well, the original ones were not protected at all. The ones they brought to the lunar surface were painted silver. The temperature, of course, is very, very extreme. On, on the lunar surface. In the sunlight you could be easily as high as, uh, as about 200 degrees Fahrenheit and of course in shadow areas and, and prolonged shadow you could be in minus uh, quantities. As far as I know they had no trouble with overheating of the film and I think it worked for them because I, I didn't hear any complaints about uh, the film getting too warm. On the other hand they might have had some trouble uh, if the film got too cold, because then it cracked. Would any of the problems cited have anything at all to do with Kodak's strange reticence to capitalize commercially on the film used for the lunar surface photography? Although various films were tried by NASA, to all intents and purposes, it was only Kodak film which was used during Project Apollo. And I think, and one understands it, I think that the corporate management in Rochester was concerned about a monopoly situation. I think that was the reason, you know, and it's sad in some ways because there was an enormous amount could be made of the fact that it was Kodak film being used. Okay, let's see, how do I do this? That's 11. At uh, 74. Hmm. Click. Wait, there's the pan. 
Uh, we'll make it work. 